Looking enough instrument control panels or PLC enclosures, then you are sure to come across a trip amplifier or trip amp. But what exactly is a trip amp and what do we use them for? In this video, we're going to find out. Most trip amps are rail mounted pieces of hardware that look like this. They can be from numerous manufacturers, with some of the common ones being PR Electronics, Papel and Fuchs, and MTL. Trip amps come in varying amounts of complexity, but at the core, they all perform the same functionality. The core functionality of trip amps is to take an analog signal, such as 4 to 20 milliamps or 1 to 5 volts from a field instrument, and activate one or more digital signals, usually in the form of a contact, when the analog signal crosses a pre-configured set point. To help us understand this, let's start with a simple example and build in some of the more complex functionality later in the video. Imagine we have a vessel full of diesel. The vessel has a radar level transmitter mounted on top of the vessel. This level transmitter gives a 4 to 20 milliamp current signal, depending on the level of the diesel within the vessel. Let us say the vessel is filled via a tanker. We want to engineer a system, so a flashing beacon is activated when the level is over 50% to provide a warning to the tanker operator that the level is getting high. We may have PLC infrastructure that could be utilised for this, but often in simple systems or remote locations, this would prove too costly. A simpler option would be to use a trip amp. Let us engineer a simple system together that utilises a trip amp to get the job done, along with a few other components. So we have our transmitter already mounted and calibrated to give 4 to 20 milliamps out for a range of 0 to 100% of the vessel. Next, we need the flashing beacon that will be mounted next to the tanker. Let's pick a flashing beacon that illuminates when supplied with 24 volts and is off when not powered. Next, we need a control panel to mount our equipment and trip amp in. In our control panel, we will be needing some power. Power will be needed for both the trip amp power and to give power to our beacon. For this, let's use a 110 volt AC power supply that gives out 24 volts DC. We would also mount our trip amp in this panel. So, to make our system work, we would first wire in the trip amp to the power supply from our PSU. Next, we need to power our transmitter. You can get trip amplifiers that will power transmitters and then read back the 4 to 20 milliamp signal. We would then set the trip amp through the push buttons on the front to close contact one when the level transmitter is over 50% or 12 milliamps. We can then wire from our power supply through our trip amp contact and into our beacon. We now have used the trip amp's functionality to give us a digital action based on the analog value without the need for a PLC or other costly infrastructure. Let's go through how this works. When the tanker driver begins filling the vessel, the level transmitter signal starts to rise. When the level gets over 50%, the trip amp closes the contact. The power from our power supply goes through the contact and to the beacon, and the beacon begins to flash, warning the driver the level is getting high. It's worth noting here that in real systems, we would have some power management in this panel in terms of isolators and fuses, and likely have some way of accepting the alarm and turning out the flashing lights. But this example is just to show you the core trip amp functionality. Now you hopefully understand some of the basics, let's look at some of the more complex functions and settings you will likely find on a trip amp. But always remember to consult the manufacturer's manual for any specific equipment you are looking at. Failure mode. In a lot of trip amps, you will have the ability to determine what happens to the digital contacts if the transmitter or analog signal goes open circuit. This is especially important to consider when thinking about safety functions. Relay action. Relay action settings will determine how the contacts behave to a rising or falling signal. In our example, we would want our contact to close when the signal increases past the set point, but there are situations where you'd want the contact to open instead of close. This setting will allow you to achieve the desired results. Hysteresis. The hysteresis values might be determined in milliamps or as a percentage of the signal. Hysteresis is how far past the set point the digital signal will need to return before becoming healthy. It's a useful feature to prevent the contacts opening and closing rapidly 
when the signal is fluctuating around the alarm point. Some trip amps even allow a retransmitted analog output that might go to a data recorder or to another control system. A lot of trip amps will allow configuration via push buttons on the front, but many also allow configuration of the device via a laptop and manufacturer software. This is useful in circumstances where you may have multiple trip amps to set up with the same configuration. It also allows you to keep a backup of the configuration in case you need to replace the trip amp because of failure. You may come across other settings in individual variants, but as before, be sure to check the manual for these. So there you go. Hopefully you now understand trip amps and some of the core functionality you're likely to see. If you've got any questions about trip amps or any other instrumentation topics, put them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Remember to subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and want to see more of the same in the future.